director at High Tide Inc. Uh, thank you so much for your interest in High Tide on this uh, wonderful conference that, uh, that we've been invited to. So just a quick step back, uh, High Tide is a leading uh, Canadian cannabis retailer. Um, and, and Canadian cannabis has now been legal across the country now for about four and a half years. And uh, during this entire time and prior to it, there was a lot of discussion. There was a lot of promises made, a lot of predictions on how the market would shape out. Um, and what we've seen now is it's, it's a very difficult market. And a lot of the promises that were made several years ago have not come out to fruition. Uh, we, we've seen a lot of companies now four and a half years in that still don't make any money, despite the fact that it's a very large industry. And it can be a very successful industry for a very select few, including High Tide, uh, which have been nimble enough to grow and grow smartly, as well as operational excellence, which has allowed us to have EBITDA positive results for the last 12 quarters. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions and there's been a lot of promises, um, but if you look at pure execution, we would put ourselves up there with any other company in, in Canadian cannabis. Uh, really quickly on a snapshot on uh, High Tide, uh, company's shares have been public since uh, December 2018. Uh, they currently trade on the NASDAQ and on the TSX Venture. Uh, market cap is about $130 million, which compares to our last quarter, which is the January quarter, where we reported $118 million of revenue for the quarter alone. This puts us at a run rate annually of over $470 million, uh, which makes us the largest uh, Canadian cannabis company by cannabis revenue. Uh, as a retailer, despite the fact that our market cap is significantly less than, uh, than some of the licensed producers, uh, one thing to note is we actually have the highest cannabis revenue of any company uh, in Canada. Our EBITDA last quarter was $5.5 million. As mentioned, it's been positive now for 12 straight quarters. Uh, the company uh, has uh, a few different parts. Uh, first part and most important is the uh, retail cannabis. So uh, our flagship brand, uh, Canna Cabana, we own, these are all, all corporate owned stores, 151 stores across the country, uh, primarily in Ontario, Manitoba, uh, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and British Columbia, uh, makes us the largest non-franchised cannabis retail chain. Uh, we have 975,000 members of our loyalty plan, uh, which according to Health Canada's uh, annual survey, uh, suggests that 14% of all cannabis users across the country, excluding Quebec, where uh, re cannabis retail is Crown Corporation owned, it's uh, public sector, so we cannot play. 14% of cannabis users across the country outside of Quebec are members of our loyalty plan, by far the highest among uh, any such plans uh, that our competitors have. This segment, the THC segment in Canada, represents about 85% of our revenue, and it's the uh, by far the core business of, of high tide. We do have two other segments, the CBD business. Uh, we, in 2021, we acquired three CBD companies. Uh, in the United States, we acquired 80% of New Leaf Naturals, uh, which has operations in Denver, Colorado, and a CGMP uh, facility. Uh, we also acquired 80% of Fab CBD uh, based in Wisconsin. We are currently in the process of uh, amalgamating uh, the back offices and streamlining operations among our two U.S. Uh, CBD brands. And we acquired 80% of Blessed CBD also in uh, 2021. Blessed is a leading U.K. brand uh, for CBD, um, and we've since taken that organically to Germany. Now, accessories is where the company has really begun. Uh, we've been in business since uh, 2009 uh, in this accessories business. Our founder and CEO, Raj Grover, started the business uh, as in one accessory shop with 48,000 of his own uh, money. Um, this grew to 19 stores across the country and eventually led to it becoming a cannabis company when uh, it became legalized across the country in Canada. Uh, we still have accessories as a big part of our business. Um, our portfolio includes two of the most popular accessories e-commerce platforms, which are Grass City, which was acquired in 2018. And in 2021, we acquired Smoke Cartel, these two platforms for online sale of uh, uh, consumption accessories are the two highest in the world in terms of overall traffic. Uh, we also own Daily High Club and Dankstop, which are other e-commerce platforms for consumption accessories. Take a step to look at our uh, unbeatable record of positive results. 
Um, the company several years ago had an annual EBITDA, uh, revenue run rate of about $8 million. Um, today, as you can see, every single quarter, it's increased very, very steadily. To, and now last quarter, as mentioned, our results were revenue $118 million. Uh, similarly, on, similarly, on the EBITDA front, we've had 12 consecutive quarters of positive EBITDA. It's been trending quite nicely the last several quarters. Last quarter was $5.5 million of adjusted EBITDA. Now, as you can see over the last several years, we know how to grow at high tide. In the last two years, our store count has gone from about 60, 65 to currently 151. Uh, the last two years were definitely part of the land grab in cannabis. Um, and we did our part knowing when to grow, knowing how to grow to generate these types of charts in terms of store count, in terms of revenue, in terms of adjusted EBITDA, knowing that we weren't just going for the sake of growth, but we were doing it profitably from an adjusted EBITDA perspective. Uh, we've since communicated to the market that we're taking a deceleration in our growth. Uh, we're no, last year, we put up about 45 stores in, in the calendar 2022. That's not going to be the plan for calendar 2023. It'll be significantly lower. Um, there's still some leases that we will uh, in really good locations that we will open up. However, uh, we, we will not match the level of growth that we had before. Our focus now that we've built this unbelievable platform across the country of 151 stores, our focus is to hone in our operations and make sure we're among one of the first few Canadian cannabis companies to be free cash flow positive. Now, in this quarter that we just reported, Q1 2023, which ended January 31st, uh, 2023, uh, free cash flow was already uh, negative 2.3 million, which was a huge improvement from the previous January, where it was negative 63 million. So more than half of the free cash flow loss has been eliminated. And um, the focus for this year, we've communicated to the market, is to make sure we are free cash flow positive by the end of this calendar year. And that'll be done by a combination of ways. Number one is dec de decreasing the uh, store count that's added during the year so that it's less of a drag on terms of capital expenditures in terms of working capital investments as well as making sure the back office is uh is streamlined a lot of the uh especially online platforms that we acquired in 2021 still run different systems we're going to be spending significant time and effort this year to optimize those to make sure they're more efficient um, and more lucrative for shareholders as well we're going to be looking at honing in our operations making sure um, our gross margins can increase to the extent uh, that the market will allow, um, as, as well as uh, as our, our general overhead, uh, say SG&A expenses. Now, as, as mentioned, years into legalization now, we're about four and a half years in, in Canada. Um, many cannabis companies, the vast majority, um, are plagued with goodwill impairments, with negative EBITDA, especially on the licensed producer side with facilities that, that have spent hundreds of millions of dollars building and have, have had to close. Uh, we generally haven't had that problem in retail. Um, we have some other dynamics regarding competition, but we, we would say retail is a totally separate asset class in the licensed producers. And within the retailers in Canada, I think it's pretty clear we're the uh, undisputed market leader uh, in terms of revenue, in terms of EBITDA, in terms of market share. Um, and that's due to our, our team. Uh, we have a team that's been doing this, serving cannabis uh, consumers uh, for over a decade, we know what consumers want. We know how, how to get the best real estate and we go out and we execute every single day at high time. Now, uh, we are Canada's long, largest non-franchise cannabis uh, retail network. Um, as you, one, one thing that makes our store stand out is when you walk into our store, it's a bright, inviting atmosphere. For example, now these images are blurred in our presentation for regulatory reasons, but when you walk into our store, you can see our products, they're uh, fully available. You, you can see them. You can ask questions with the pot tender regarding the attributes. They can help guide you to the type of experience that you're looking for. And the, uh, the walls are all surrounded by accessories. And these are, for the most part, our accessories. Because the company has been involved in accessories for over a decade, we have thousands of SKUs that we design, manufacture, import into Canada and the United States, retail, and uh, wholesale. Um, so when you walk in, as opposed to other stores where a customer comes in, all you see is two or three TV screens, and it's a bunch of strain names and some numbers, whether it be prices or THC content, 
you can actually come in and try to get a, a better sense of the look and feel of cannabis, as well as accessories, where uh, generally speaking, it's about 1% of sales uh, for across the country, whereas accessories for us, given our uh, proprietary accessories and the fact that it's been in our DNA for over a decade, accessories are about 4 to 5% of sales within our four walls. Uh, in terms of our footprint, as mentioned, we have 151 stores across the country. Uh, the widest footprint is in Alberta, 75 stores. Uh, and Ontario is our second largest market where we have 49. In uh, October 2021, uh, Canna Cabana launched North America's first of its kind cannabis discount club model. So when customers walk in, they see two different prices. They see the market price. This is the price where cannabis would be sold at our competitors. And a member price, which is usually 20-25%, significantly lower than the market price. But in order to be, in order to get the uh, member price, you have to be a member. And it is free to be a member. You have to sign up giving your uh, phone number and your email. Um, and then we can be in touch with you uh, to send you uh, fully compliant offers, communications, etc. And what we found is over 90% now of our sales come from our members. Our membership has exploded to 975,000 across the country, which again is 14% of cannabis consumers outside of Quebec. Uh, and they come for a few different reasons. Probably most importantly is our unbeatable prices. And we have price matching and you have to be a member to get the, the, uh, the member price. But however, the fact is we have accessories where we can offer significantly steeper discounts, often 70, 80%, because there are accessories. There is no middleman. We've designed, manufactured, imported and retailed them. Uh, so we can offer significantly lower access prices on accessories. Customers come in, they buy the accessories, they see the member market price dynamics, they sign up, they see the, uh, the, the price that they save on cannabis, they get the text messages and the emails, and it generates a loyalty loop uh, for our customers. As well, we have our own white label products, which we'll get to in a second, uh, where, again, you can only acquire these, for the most part, only acquire these products at our stores, and there's a little bit more loyalty that, uh, that's, that's built in when you, when you acquire uh, our, our white label products. Now, how can we tell how we've been doing over the past year and a half since the Discount Club model launched? Well, one thing we do every month is we compare our same store sales for that month versus the national increase in total sales, including the impact of adding new stores. And so that's on, shown in the graph here. As you can see, our same store sales alone have significantly outperformed the broader cannabis market outside of Quebec, even including the impact of new stores. To be specific, in the last almost year and a half, our store, our same store sales, if you chain them monthly, are up almost double where they were back in October 2021 when our fiscal year ended and we launched a discount club model. Whereas in contrast, if you look at total retail sales across the country, excluding Quebec, it's only up about 14%. And during this time frame, the store count has increased by about 35%, which tells you that the average store across the country is significantly negative over this time in terms of sales trajectory, where our same store sales have almost doubled. Huge, huge outperformance. I think it's very clear that customers are finding our offering very compelling and keep coming back. As well, looking at another way, store economics. Uh, in, in Alberta, where we have the most number of stores, our average store does about $2 million of annual sales, which has doubled the uh, peers in Alberta. In Ontario, where the dynamics are a little bit different and the market is obviously significantly larger, our Canada Cabana stores do almost three and a half times the revenue that our peers generate in Ontario. Significant, significant outperformance. And when you put all this together in terms of store count that has increased over the past two years and same store sales that continue to outpace the national averages, uh, you look at our Canna Cabana national market share, again, excluding Quebec, where there is no private retail. You can see since late 2021, it has steadily increased effectively every single month uh, to the point where it's, it's risen about 1% a quarter for the past five quarters. And uh, if you look at the last quarter we just reported, January 2023, we're now averaging over 9%. One thing we introduced uh, late last year, but a year after the discount club model, is Elite. Elite is the next evolution of it. It's a paid membership 
uh, where customers pay used, uh, a price of uh, $60 a year, but for the first year, given inflationary times and to make sure and we maximize the number of signups, it's offered at a 50% discount to $3 a year or $2.50 a month. Now, elite members, they get access to even more exclusive pricing on our white label products, on flash sales for specific products, on specific uh, limited edition accessories, on more promotions and giveaways uh, where uh, allowable by regulations. And we're very happy with the first few months of Elite. Customers are recognizing uh, the value offering uh, and we'll be offering more and more SKUs within our stores towards being Elite only, which we think will help accelerate adoption of Elite, uh, which will offer two things. Uh, on the uh, customer side, it'll further cement the loyalty loop because if I'm paying uh, money to, to shop at a, at a certain retailer, uh, well, the odds that I'm gonna shop anywhere else go down significantly. As well as for our shareholders, uh, Elite, as it builds up, should offer a recurring high margin revenue opportunity uh, which shareholders uh, should benefit from. As well, we have our own white label products. Uh, Cabana Cannabis Co. Uh, is our brand. Uh, we've launched over 10 SKUs now across the country in certain markets. Uh, we've also taken New Leaf, which is our CBD brand in the United States, and ported that brand to Canada. Uh, through license through partnerships with licensed producers so now we have white label offerings across thc cbd and consumption accessory products um, again this is something that is just relatively uh, new in terms of when we launched it uh, we believe in the next few years we can get up to 25 percent of all in-store offerings and with, again we think there's there's two benefits here first is more customer loyalty as they gravitate to our brand and have them be the brand of choice and second for shareholders being our brands, we, th we expect to generate 5 to 7% increased gross margins uh, by having the products that we sell our brands under our white label platform. Another aspect we should talk about is Fast Tender. Uh, Fast Tender was acquired in uh, February 2022. Um, it is a technology of kiosks and lockers. We're dealing with the, uh, the kiosks first. Uh, there are also four and a half years into legalization, there are all sorts of customers. Um, there are customers that walk in, want to have ask questions with the butt tender, see what's trending, what they recommend. Um, and there are other customers that frankly know exactly what they want. And that uh, we want to make sure that we offer a different platform uh, for customers to make sure it's a seamless experience. They walk in, you see the kiosk on the wall, you, you punch in your order, it spits out the receipt, and then you go pick it up. This is uh, something revolutionary in Canadian cannabis. Um, no one else has a, a platform like this that we are aware of. Um, and we've installed it now in over 120 of our stores across the country. We're seeing very good take up from customers. We're seeing positive responses from butt tenders as they can now focus on fulfilling orders and assisting customers that want assistance uh, as opposed to those who know exactly what they want and are in a uh, time crunch to get it as, as quickly as possible. Uh, this technology, we've already had the inbounds uh, in the United States. Uh, for uh, for uh, offering there in terms of licensing. Uh, the plan is to make sure we outfit our stores first. And by the end of the year, we plan to enter into license agreements uh, for uh, cannabis offers in the United States who would like to license our technology, which again, should provide a very high margin a revenue stream uh, for shareholders. Uh, digging into some of the other aspects of the company other than just the brick and mortar, uh, New Leaf, uh, America's premier cannabinoid company. Again, we bought 80% of it in November 2021. They have a CGMP certified facility in Denver. Uh, the vast majority of their products are sold uh, direct to consumer. Um, and uh, we did port this brand into Canada uh, late last year. Fab CBD, another one of our uh, of our brands in the in the UK in the US. Bless CBD, as mentioned, is our UK brand of CBD We've since taking it uh, organically into uh, Germany. Now on the consumption accessory side, uh, Grass City, as mentioned, was acquired by High Tide in 2018. Um, we had a situation where based in Amsterdam, um, but we saw that the vast majority of, of orders was being uh, ordered from customers in the United States. So we acquired the company, set up a new distribution uh, warehouse in Las Vegas to make sure we could fulfill those orders uh, from Vegas with significantly shorter shipping times and lower shipping costs. And we've seen a significant increase, uh, approximately triple 
of revenue at Grass City uh, since, we, since it's been acquired. Sim simultaneously, when we acquired Grass City, only about 2% of uh, the products that they sold were our high tide accessories. Now that we own the, the platform, it's about over 50% of the products that they sell are our accessories. So you can see the synergies between having our own brands of accessories and having our own platforms where we can uh, offer them to customers. Smoke Cartel is the world's most popular online uh, consumption accessories platform by traffic uh, as of 2022. Um, again, it'll be acquired in 2021. This one's a little bit different in that uh, unlike Grass City, which has a warehouse and holds inventory, Smoke Cartel is completely drop shipping. They don't own any inventory. They simply offer other other uh, manufacturers and vendors inventory. That way you can run it as a very uh, inventory light uh, model. Uh, it has over 965,000 customers to date. Um, and it was one of the uh, public companies uh, that, that, that High Tide has acquired. Uh, again, in March, 2021, uh, we've, we've seen sales increase significantly uh, since uh, we, they've joined the High Tide family. Daily High Club, uh, again, it's a uh, accessories online platform. Uh, what's unique about this one is they have a subscription box service. So we have 11,000 monthly subscribers. They pay every month and they receive a different box of accessories shipped to them every single month. Um, it's a very, very unique uh, offering. And we've taken the technology of the monthly subscription service and since ported it to our CBD companies. For example, Fab and, uh, and, and New Leaf, as well as Blessed, where we uh, offer this subscription plan uh, for customers. Uh, Dankstop uh, was acquired by High Tide in uh, August uh, 2021. It is another smaller online uh, consumption accessories platform uh, based in the United States. Uh, Valiant Distribution is High Tide's North American distribution arm. Uh, we have a distribution business in the United States where we supply our accessories to, uh, to retailers. Um, we don't really do that in Canada, given the, uh, the, the demand for our accessories and the fact that we want to be able to make sure our stores are uh, sufficiently supplied with our own accessories uh, for customers. Uh, but you can see some of our brands, famous brands, Puff Puff Pass, Vodka Glass, et cetera. Um, we have over a catalog of over 5,000 SKUs of accessories, approximately 80% of which are our accessories. Uh, we design them and uh, have them manufactured overseas and import them. In terms of what to look forward to for High Tide, uh, there's definitely a lot of catalysts here for, uh, for the company. Um, first is store growth. Now we've, we're decelerating that compared to prior years, but we do have several leases that we're building out in really good op in really good areas. Um, I can see on the real estate front, uh, our model is to anchor ourselves with top tier tenants and top 